Hi everyone, this is Meena Puri from Ayurveda Healing Center. Just wanted to make sure that connection was on. And uh, Susie Morris, Susie, come mm -hmm. on in in the camera from Ayurvedic Healing Center. I hope you're having a fantastic mm -hmm. day. Um, let me scoot over. You scoot okay. over here. And um, so, happy Wednesday. I hope you're having a fantastic day. And uh, today I thought about, we want to talk about nutrition. Um, it's a big deal. Food is a big deal. Food always has been a big deal. And food still is, you know, holds a lot of our attention, is at the center of our life. And in the ancient times, food was naturally used as medicine. When somebody had a cough or a cold, we didn't rush to the doctor, and we actually went in the kitchen to see what we can make. And I'm hoping that many of us still do that, because uh, it's just, you know, more commonsensical. But uh, paying attention to... Uh, the other times when we don't have the colds and the cough and how we are kind of creating that. So although food has gotten a lot of attention and a lot of focus, um, it's, you know, the funny thing is we're still searching for that miracle food. We're still searching for that one food that's going to be nutrient-packed, is going to be easy to make, it's going to take no time at all, it's a grab and a go item, and um, we don't have to worry about it, and it's going to also help us maintain our weight or lose weight. So how we thought about food in olden times is very different from how we are thinking about food in modern times. We're all, we're all in the market for quick, easy, fast, tastes good and good for you. So sometimes one food item, that's a, that's a lot of, um, you know, that's a lot of weight to carry for one food item to provide all that for you. Um, so, you know, that's what has given rise to all the energy bars and energy balls and, you know, power-packed foods that we can just quickly grab and it can provide us everything that we need. Nothing wrong with that. I love all of that stuff. But what I wanted to talk about is looking at nutrition at far bigger than just the palate and just all the and above and beyond the ingredients that are in the food that makes it so power packed um you know in the modern times along with looking for um the quick grab and go food we are also limiting food to just our palate we want it to taste good. So we have fiber disguised in chocolate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, everything is disguised in chocolate, mm -hmm. um, which is great. Chocolate is great, but the ability to taste mm -hmm. the real food uh, actually has, uh, it provides a chemical reaction in the body to secrete enzymes that are able to digest that food. So when we hide the real taste of the food away, we're actually uh, shortchanging um, what food can do for us, and we're really undermining the intelligence of food. Ayurvedic way of looking at food, it is so much broader and also actually is so much deeper. And that is why in Ayurvedic medicine, food is used as medicine. Uh, it's not just to, you know, to satisfy the cravings and fill an empty spot in the belly, but it is used as medicine to heal the body, to repair the body, and to, at the same time, keep us healthy and living long and radiant life. So that's, you know, if we're going to use food at the center of our life, why not get everything out of it that we can, right? We're able to, we have the information. We have the knowledge. We have uh, so much food available from different countries, available 24-7. Um, although I think that has uh, caused more problems than helped us. But nonetheless, you know, we do live in a land of abundance, and everything is available at all the time. And if we want, we can use it to our advantage. So Ayurvedic uh, medicine looks at food as more than what meets your taste buds. Food has an intelligence, and the intelligence is hidden in the initial taste of the food. Food has six different tastes, which is salty, sweet, sour, 
pungent, astringent, and bitter. Okay? And these different tastes stimulate different enzyme secretion in the body in order to be able to digest that taste. And not only that, these tastes, including all six tastes in the body, helps us um, satiate the, you know, curb the, curb the cravings that we have. So in our culture, um, sugar is, the sweet taste is over-consumed and bitter taste is under-consumed. Uh, perhaps that's a reason too. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so funny uh, live today. So perhaps that's a reason to overdo on alcohol. It has bitter taste. I'm sure there are many other reasons why we do alcohol. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, coffee. And apart from the you know fact that coffee just smells so darn good and uh, people love it, I love the smell of it. I don't drink coffee. But um, you know, there's maybe that's a reason why we are overdoing on some of these tastes diet. So that's one thing that Ayurvedic medicine looks at. And it also looks at the time of the year, which means what is suggested that we eat in the winter time, it probably is not a good idea to eat that in the summertime and vice versa. So we have four seasons. Um, the seasons tell us the predominance of a particular element in the environment and the environment affects our body as well. We are in the body as the as the environment outside of us. So different seasons ask that we um, eat a little bit differently in different seasons. Now, time of the day is also important. Uh, what we need to break the fast in the morning is not the same thing that we want to go to bed at night uh, with the full belly with. So the time of the day matters. And um, middle of the day is the the peak season is, you know, the sun is the hottest uh, when the sun is out, even if it isn't. The sun or the fire, digestive fire in our body, in our body is at the peak, so it's able to digest the food that we're eating. Many times in our culture, we are very concerned with the ingredients and the properties of the food that is really got, it's filled with antioxidant, anti-inflammatory things, and it's got all the minerals and vitamins and whatever not. So everything is all power packed. What we really uh, don't pay attention to is what our body is doing with that food. Um, so it's not just limited to let's just go ahead and dump all the good stuff in our body, but we have to pay attention to is the body able to recognize, number one, can it digest, can it process, can it give you the energy or the fuel that you need from the body. So many times we neglect what happens to the food once it's inside our body. Ayurveda looks deeply at our ability to digest, process, and absorb the food and eliminate what we do not digest. Uh, that's foremost than what goes on, what goes inside your, into your mouth. And the truth is our digestion is meant to be that strong that you can chew metal. And the digestive ability, the intelligence of the body will recognize it and get rid of it. So we're far from that. Mm -hmm. But that's really how Ayurvedic medicine looks at food, not just limited to the taste buds. And then who is consuming the food? So, you know, apple for somebody, one person may be, you know, the, the nectar for them, and for the person it can be the poison. It's just an example. Not everybody, uh, it, you know, everybody will have a different digestive system, their different constitution, their tendency for imbalances, or any illnesses that may be going on. So food is very specific in Ayurvedic medicine as who's consuming it, what's going on with them, their ability to digest it, and what is it that we are trying to create in their physiology? What, what is it that we are trying to balance and what imbalance is going on? So, and also food combinations. Uh, because we are in such a mindset to have really nutrient-packed food, um, we sometimes combine things that shouldn't be combined. We don't understand that when we are combining certain foods, they actually become more indigestible in the body. So how to combine the food is also something that Ayurvedic medicine looks at. So how Ayurvedic medicine looks at food, treats food as medicine is, is adjusting uh, to the time of the day, to the season, to your imbalance, 
to your constitution, to what we are trying to achieve. So it's a very sophisticated science where we, it's not something we, you know, um, apples are good for me, so I'm just going to go to town eating apples. It doesn't work like that. We have to be mindful. We have to look at always see what we are trying to accomplish and how to adjust this little part over here, how to adjust this, and how much and how less. We have to look at a lot of factors in order to understand what to adjust so the food can actually be medicine and it can convey the intelligence to our body that it is meant to convey. So here's a little, so this was a little, this is how um, Ayurvedic medicine views food so much differently than just looking at nutrition, okay? And I don't think any other modality or science goes deeper into the food, food like Ayurvedic medicine does. Now, not to mention their post-digestive effects of the food. And it's not it's something that we can do all the time. We always have to be mindful. We always have to adjust. We do something for a while and then see if we need to adjust, give away or take away. And in a commonsensical way of thinking about this is just looking at how we feel. We consume something and how do we feel about it? Does it agree with you? Many times uh, the body's experience is very intelligent. If we tune into it, we can pay attention to it. For example, if you've consumed heavy food, say, for lunch, okay, your body's telling you it's gotten everything it needed. Then at lunchtime, I'm sure most of us do that already, there's a tendency to just eat light, okay? There's, it, to look at the body's intelligence just simply as that and tune into that and do eat light. And... Um, you know, if you feel like you need, you feel a little bit depleted or run down, then you maybe need foods that have a little bit more nourishment and healing qualities to it, um, broths and soups and things like that, along with rest and um, many other factors. But we really can begin to use body's intelligence in understanding what foods are working for us, what is not. So it's not the, um, you know, our modern, um, you know, in the world, we just want to do whatever the heck we want to do. Um, we don't want to have to stop eating our favorite foods, even though they may be uh, harmful to our health in the long run. Um, you know, the ads are filled with it. Here, you know, go ahead and take this uh, tablet if you have heartburn. You know, but don't stop eating your spicy um, animal protein rich and heavy foods. And so, you know, we can go that route. There's nothing wrong with it. But this is this stuff is, you know, Ayurvedic medicine is if you're looking to dive in deeper and if you're looking to as any difficulty, any physical symptoms you have, if you are going to wake up and take this as an opportunity to heal your health from inside out and to become whole. And uh, so there's no, it's wherever you are, whatever you are willing to do, but Ayurvedic medicine digs deeper than just giving you a little pill for your symptoms. So that's how Ayurvedic medicine views food as medicine. And in my practice, that's the first thing I always look at because these are simple things that we can change. Everybody's in the kitchen, everybody's eating, everybody needs to eat, and even tweaking simple few things for people, they begin to see the effect. And most of the people, they really enjoy doing that. When we can do things that make our health and make it better, we actually feel empowered. We're like, oh, wow, if I, if I did, you know, if I ate this way, I understand how I feel. It feel my digestion feels better, my mood is better, my energy better, and I sleep better. So most people really enjoy taking the charge of their life, their health into their own hands. And I work with that, you know, first thing with my clients because it's something they can very easily um, begin to do. So when I say easily, I don't mean, you know, we don't throw the book of Ayurvedic uh, nutrition on them. The meeting people where they are, even adding a simple uh, hot water every day changes their, um, changes how they feel. You know, taking a little ginger pickle with their meals helps their digestion. You don't have to change your diet. You just have to tweak a few things uh, in order for the food to become Ayurvedic food. And uh, so you can reap the medicinal benefits that come with thinking about food just a little deeper than your palate. So 
what I wanted to talk to about since we are on that topic, so here's my book. Um, I'm going to, there's a chapter in here that says, what makes food Ayurvedic? Uh, just so you can start to think about that and um, perhaps incorporate some of these ideas into your meal and see how you feel. So one of the things is food needs to be hot, freshly cooked, nourishing, organic, and non-GMO. <laughs> so <laughs> let me repeat that. Food should be hot, uh, freshly cooked, um, non-GMO, and organic. So it's, it can seem like a tall order, okay, because it's a far cry from your, you know, service window at the fast food restaurant. It is. But we can start from somewhere. We can at least, um, you know, if you're eating a sandwich, maybe toast the bread, give some, provide some heat to the food. Because when we eat food that is below room temperature, it actually reduces the efficiency of our digestive system. Okay? So start with one thing, maybe make it hot. You can, um, you know, take food, make food in a thermos flask, um, thermos flask that you can take with you to work so it stays hot. And um, many of the organic vegetables, they are really not that much expensive than the uh, non-organic um, because there's so much pesticide use um, in the food these days. The food quality isn't there. So we do the best we can. If you're able to spend extra bucks, extra few dollars, it may be your, you know, better health insurance uh, than keep on paying for, you know, health insurance. So look at the food that way. See what you can do. See if you can spend a little extra now to save your health in the long run. Okay? The second point I have is skip the cold drinks. That's another big one because in our culture, it's very common, you know, you get the food, what would you like to drink? And when I was growing up in India, nobody ever asked us that. Um, the drink was never served with the food, or there was no drink to be served. You ate your meal, and a little bit after, you went to the tap and you had water. That's really how it was. And now we have to have a drink next to the meal, and many of us are... Uh, and many of those cold drinks, you know, if you're going to a restaurant, they're loaded with ice, which means they're really, really cold. So imagine eating um, like hot, cheesy, um, greasy food, and then you are drinking cold water with it. It's going to solidify the grease in your body, okay, in your digestive tract. It's like if you know, if your sink was clogged up, you, in order to unclog it, you're not going to pour cold, icy water over it. You're going to put hot water so mm -hmm. the, ice, the grease can move through. The same concept. Uh, so that's one thing that you can do is avoid the icy cold drinks, and especially during the meal time. I know it's hot out there, but if, in between meals, if you feel like having a cold drink, it's a better alternative than to drink an icy cold drink and large volume of it with your meal, sipping it while you're eating, because you're actually uh, helping the food to stay stuck in your digestive tract. It's not going to move, and it's not going to be processed or digested. So sipping a hot cup of water while you're having your meal can really do wonders for you, so give it a try. And um, another thing I have, which it kind of makes me laugh when I look at the book, because some of these are... Funny points that we take for granted. That's why they're funny. So the next thing is food needs to be tasty and digestible. I think we covered the tasty because that's what we're after. We're after the taste. But I think what we don't pay attention to if if this tasty is digestible. And many times, like I mentioned earlier, we combine foods. We are we are combining foods that are actually make them indigestible when they're in the body because they taste so good. Many times these uh, quick and easy recipes, you add this, you add many different things. And uh, so especially when the, the food is so nutrient rich, your body has to be able to digest it. Sometimes when you overdo it, your system is like, you know what, that's too much. Give it a little break. So, say, you know, like, Combining um, a cheese with meat products, 
these two are heavy things to digest for the body. And combining milk with um, salty food, like try to put salt or lemon in milk, it'll make it curdle. Same thing happens in our body. So food needs to be tasty and digestible. And the next point is, yeah, we've been, this food needs to be combined so the whole meal points in the same direction. What do I uh, mean by that? Uh, sorry, the light is going on and off. We have our office being painted. Um, so what does that mean? Suppose you are eating, um, if you are trying to cool the heat in your body, and you're eating, for example, uh, um, bitter greens, at the same time, you're dipping the bitter greens in a hot spicy sauce or you sprinkle uh, red chili peppers on it. So bitter is cooling to the body, red chili peppers, any hot food like that will heat the body. So they're kind of contra, going, fighting with each other, going in the opposite direction. So that's what I mean by that your meal should point to the same direction that is going to kind of achieve the same thing in the body. If you want to have bitter, if you want to have spicy, instead of chili peppers, which will dry and heat the body, try a ginger pickle. It's just a slices of ginger with a little bit of lemon and salt, and that'll give you a little bite to the food, or radishes, okay? And um, food needs to be balancing. What does it mean? I think on the simple notion, you know, many times when we are doing, um, what does it mean? Food needs to be balancing. That I think different uh, food groups, like, um, what example can I give? Like, a, you know, piece of steak with a glass of wine. So both things are um, inflammatory to the body. And perhaps adding um, vegetables or some grain with that and cutting down the quantity of the meat might be a better way to go. So ideally, 50% uh, of our meal should be comprised of freshly cooked vegetables. One way I do that is we think of vegetables as a side dish. When we think of it as a side dish, we naturally cut down the uh, the quantity of it. Think of vegetables as a main dish. Make everything else a side dish. So that's one way for you to load up on a lot of good vegetables, including leafy green vegetables and da 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 da. This is easier. So we accomplish when we think of the vegetables as the main dish, not a side dish. And about 25% or one quarter of the plate should be whole grains. Many grains are a great source of protein and fiber. They're easy to cook and they're very uh, versatile. And then, um, and another 25% um, is, uh, so 25%, 50% is vegetables, and 25% is, I'm reading what I wrote in my own book because I don't not remember, 25% should be whole grains, and 25%, um, what is the other 25%? It's um, like soups or um, uh, like lentils and things like that, or, you know, um, okay. So we're going to go over it again. 50% of the meal should be freshly cooked vegetables. And 25% should be whole grains. So we've covered our grains, covered our vegetables. And uh, so for non-vegetarians, if you rather add animal-based protein, then just keeping it to the 25% of the meal. And... Um, and other 25% are things like um, pickles, olives, uh, sauerkraut, some chutneys. And if you like to do a piece of whole grain bread, um, that is what should cover. But the two things to make, you know, instead of thinking about the whole 100% of the plate, 
think about the two things to do is number one, 50% uh, of the plate should be vegetables. Other 25% make it whole grain um, or other animal-based protein or lentils or legumes, whatever you prefer, and try adding uh, something um, fermented like a sauerkraut or olives or ginger pickle to the menu as well, okay? And the next one is food needs to be eaten when we feel hungry. It's kind of, um, you know, it's a, it's a no-brainer, but it's actually a, one of the very difficult things. People, we don't know when we're hungry. Many times we look to food when we are stressed out, when we are tired. And many times actually when we are thirsty, we think that we are hungry, so we eat. And what happens is that when we're eating all the time, uh, when we don't make time to eat, we actually end up eating all the time. We just kind of grabbing, nibbling, and this is not a good thing for your digestion. You want to sit down and have a meal. And uh, many times we are taking a little less in the plate and assessing before getting a second serving can help us assess, you know what, I'm actually quite satisfied. It's just when we don't even take time to think, we, you know, we you know, belong to the clean plate club, we want to <laughs> clean it all up, and that that's how, you know. So if you if we put a little less on our plate, we don't have to feel stressed about cleaning our plate. We can always take more, so it's always good to take less than too much, and then feel like we have to finish it because you don't want to waste it. Okay. And food should be eaten in pleasant surroundings without distractions or stimulation. So heavy conversations like politics or <laughs> arguments <laughs> uh, or finances <laughs> or the state of our world, do not make that part of your conversation on a dinner table. You know, calm environment, pleasant like conversation. I once had lunch with uh, one of my colleagues, a Chinese doctor, Dr. Lee in um, Ann Arbor, and he invited me over to lunch for the whole, they cooked their lunch, the whole staff sat down at a table. The whole time we were eating, nobody said a word. Wow. Nobody said a word, and I was like, wow, this is really amazing, and um, we just ate, and when the food was done, then I had my meeting with him, because the meeting was not over lunch, mm -hmm. like how we, you know, we discuss everything over lunch or over dinner. It's fun. I enjoy it, but just wanted to give you a contrast as to my experience, so at least move in that direction where we are, you know, we are, we're happily eating. We're happily in the company of those that we're eating with so the body can relax and it can, in, you can enjoy the food, the body can digest the food. When we are upset or angry, it, you know, food is not serving us. It's not giving us the clean fuel that we need, okay? And uh, the lastly, Food needs to be balancing for your particular constitution. Like I said before, food, if somebody has inflammation, giving them inflammatory foods like hot red peppers is not the way to go. And uh, what is your constitution? In the book, there is a quiz that you can take that gives you, that you can fill it out and it'll give you your constitution and your tendency for particular imbalances. Um, go, you know, I urge, uh, encourage you to do that. The book is available on Amazon. Here it is, Healing Your Relationship with Food, The Ayurveda Answer. There's a lot in this book, and I just read that chapter to you out of the book. So you're starting to, if you want to really move in the direction or lean into the direction of using food to heal you and using food to, as a medium for you to grow, for you to become healthy, for you to live a long life and happy life, Food is a great way to start. Um, go ahead and get this book. And um, I think that's it for today. So I'm excited to see what our lunch is going to be. Uh, happy lunching and happy dinnering. Uh, mm -hmm. We will see you next time. I'll pick another topic from the book and we'll continue our conversation. If you like this video, please click like. Share if you have any questions or comments. I really would love to hear from you. I'm here to serve you. If you have any questions and if you would like me to address a particular topic, we would be happy to do that. So thank you so much, mm -hmm. Meena Puri, Ayurvedic Healing Center, 
guiding you to heal your life. And this is Susie Morris. Mm -hmm. She's mm -hmm. also studied Ayurveda, Ayurvedic practitioner. She's a personal trainer and a bone specialist. Mm -hmm. So bye for now, <laughs> bye and bye. we will see you later. Bye-bye. That was my